Once upon a time, there were three musketeers, but instead of fighting the bad, they tried to help us understand the bad in others better, to understand the bad in ourselves better, to understand ourselves better in general, in order to become better people, to live more meaningful lives and to become a better society. As in any good drama, at some point, the three musketeers had a conflict. And after some time and disagreement, both Carl Jung and Alfred Adler distanced themselves from Freud and his psychoanalysis, leaving Freud quite bitter, to be exact. In this video, I would like to give you a little introduction into Alfred Adler's psychology. He called it individual psychology. And to be honest, I'm quite a beginner in this myself. My name is Alina. I'm a graduate student of clinical psychology. And while I studied a lot about psychodynamic theory, both privately and at university, Adler's psychology is quite new to me but it is incredibly interesting and I hope that I could just take you along with me to learn with me as I learn about it myself. So today I would like to give you a very brief introduction into his basic assumptions and especially into why he was different from Freud. Now Freud was very much about where are we coming from, he was very much focused on the past and Adler was much more concerned with the question of where are we going, what are we striving for and he was thus much more focused on the future than the past. The issue that both Carl Jung and Adler had with Freud, that Freud took the sex drive very literally. Um, for Adler and Jung, it was a way of understanding people, more like using it as a metaphor than using it literally. But Freud was very much interested in the sex drive as a biological drive. You might remember from the last two weeks, I talked about Freud's personality structure, the id, ego, superego, and especially the id, that is involved in the internal conflict is very much driven by biological drives, especially by the drive for sex and aggression. Now Adler replaced the sex drive with the masculine protest. He kind of replaced Freud's well, kind of biological, external, uh, causal explanation with a much more psychological, internal and subjective explanation. And this was exactly the part where Freud and Adler split. Adler explains the essence of being human as the essence of striving for something. We want to go from minus to plus. If you look at any graph, in, in case you studied business like I used to, in any graph we want to go from the bottom left corner to the upper right corner. It is always about striving for something greater. It is always about having goals. And in Adler's words, being human means to strive to go from inferiority to superiority. I mean, in the striving process, there are two points. We need to understand what exactly is inferiority, what exactly does it mean to feel inferior, are there good and bad sides to it, and we need to understand what is superiority, what are we actually striving for. And for Adler, those two are very, very individual and very, very subjective. The strive for superiority is always based on a very individual and unique feeling of inferiority that usually develops quite early on. And of course Adler acknowledges that there can be biological influences, influences from the environment that shape what you strive for, but in the end you're striving for a self-ideal and that is subjective, it's made up, it's fiction. And this is especially the point where Adler sees the person much more positively than Freud did, because the fact that you create the goals you strive for yourself also means that you have the responsibility and the possibility to change. By changing the goals you strive for, you can change the entire psychological processes that are attached to them. And of course, this understanding also changes how Adler sees the unconscious in comparison to Freud. For Adler, the unconscious is not really uh, like a separate part, separate entity, but it is the unknown part of your goal. It is basically that part of the striving that the individual does not understand. Now, because every human being strives to go from inferiority to superiority and reach their goals, Adler sees the personality in that way as well. So personality, or as he calls it, lifestyle or style of life, is a self-consistent organization of everything, all the psychological processes that we need in order to reach a certain goal. And this lifestyle or personality structure is established very early on. And in case you sometimes feel like either your own behavior or the behavior of others doesn't make sense, it is simply because they try using a different means to reach the same goal. 
So in this case for Adler, it is very clear that the past doesn't determine the future, as Freud would have it, but it is the goals that we set. The past can only make certain things more probable, but it doesn't determine what is going to happen with the rest of our lives. Now Adler calls his approach individual psychology, and I feel like this can be a bit misleading because it's actually not just about the individual separated from everything else, but Adler always talks about the individual in the social context. We simply cannot separate the individual from the social context, from social factors, and from social values. Freud would then say, well, the individual has to repress certain things in order to fit in in society, in order to adjust. But Adler says that we actually have a very innate human ability to adjust and be part of society. And this is something that we just have to develop. And this inner ability for every being to socialize is called social interest or social feeling. And now social interest is absolutely crucial to adjustment in order to be a fully functioning part of society. Male adjustment, on the other hand, can then be spotted on, well, not fitting in, not adjusting. This can be either because you have a very high feeling of inferiority, so you feel worse than everyone else and therefore you're not a part of society. It can be that you just don't have a social interest, so you have no desire to adjust yourself. Or it can be that you strive for goals that will want to make you feel better than everyone. So you have an increased need for superiority that is at odds with fitting in into society and being a healthy part of it. Now from these kind of basic assumptions, Ada develops a huge and very, very interesting idea about what it means to be human, what it means to live a good life, what tasks do we need to fulfill in order to be part of society? How can we differentiate between seeing others as enemies and seeing the others as comrades? How can we actually succeed in the big life tasks that we have to fulfill in, in love, in relationships, in work, especially what excuses which he calls life lie. What excuses do we use in order to avoid big life tasks, to be part of society, to see others as equal and not as better or worse? How can we develop a healthy sense of inferiority? And how can we use that healthy sense of inferiority to strive for superiority that is not at odds with being a social creature and living in harmony with other people? So as you can maybe tell, I'm incredibly excited about this. If you're also excited to learn more about Alfred Adler, his concept, and how you can actually apply them to your own life to identify better goals and actually reach them, then feel free to subscribe, hit the bell button if you want to be notified when I upload new videos, and I'm very much looking forward to seeing you next week. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.